Hey everyone, I wanted to talk about uh, different receptors that neurotransmitters use. There are two main types. One is a channel-linked or ionotropic receptor. And this is pretty much the same uh, type of receptor that we have talked about before. They're ligand-gated ion channels. So you have some chemical bind to an ion channel and then the ion channel will open up. These channels will be on the opposite side of where the neurotransmitter is released. So neurotransmitter will be released from the presynaptic neuron, diffuse across the synaptic cleft, and then bind to its receptor on the postsynaptic neuron on its membrane. Uh, if it's an excitatory site, then sodium will be allowed to enter, and you'll see a depolarizing effect. If it is an inhibitory site, then chloride will enter, uh, and that negative charge coming in will cause uh, hyperpolarization. Another type of receptor is a G-protein-linked receptor, and this receptor is a little bit more complicated. It's also called G-protein-coupled receptors or metabotropic receptors. These are much more indirect. It's a complex cascade of reactions, which takes more time, um, but you are going to get an amplification of that original signal, so you get more bang for your buck with a G-protein-linked receptor compared to an ionotropic receptor. Um, you see these transmembrane protein complexes. We're going to see many different um, proteins come together with these reactions, with these types of receptors. Um, another thing that these receptors are responsible for is to control production of various second messengers. Uh, cyclic AMP is one of the main ones we'll be looking at, um, but there are others as well, such as calcium. So here is a picture of a G-protein-linked receptor, uh, receptor system, and you can see there are several different parts to this, um, to this receptor system. Before, we looked at um, ionotropic receptors where you basically have the neurotransmitter bind to its receptor and you open up an ion channel. <clears throat> and you see this one is a little bit more complicated. So let's go through it step by step. G-protein linked or G-protein coupled receptors. You have the neurotransmitter bind to its receptor and this receptor can then activate a G-protein. The G-protein uses GTP, which is an energy molecule similar to ATP. And this activated G-protein can then activate an enzyme called adenylate cyclase. Adenylate cyclase, you can see it's an enzyme, ends in ASE. Its job is to transform ATP into cyclic AMP. <coughs> cyclic AMP can then do one of several different jobs. Uh, one thing it can do is to change membrane permeability, as you see here. This ion channel has been opened to allow a particular ion in, such as sodium or calcium uh, or potassium. Normally, these ions are not allowed to enter or leave the cell, but if you open an ion channel, then now they are. So that's one thing cyclic AMP can do. Another thing that cyclic AMP uh, may do is to activate enzymes. And frequently, these enzymes are protein kinases. Kinases are used to phosphorylate substances. So protein kinases would phosphorylate or add a phosphate group to proteins. And this will activate those proteins. Uh, a third option for what cyclic AMP can do is that it can go into the nucleus to activate specific genes. And then these genes could be trans transcribed into mRNA. mRNA can then be translated into protein and you get a new protein. So cyclic AMP has uh, several different jobs it can perform in the cell. <clears throat> Here's another picture. I know this topic can be confusing, so I like to include um, several different pictures. And I know it says here water-soluble hormone. You can pretend like that says neurotransmitter. So you have your neurotransmitter bind to your receptor. Receptor can then activate your G protein. So here is your activated G protein. And again, you see this GTP molecule. So activated G protein. I'm going to go to the next slide and I'm looking at the top picture up here. Here's your activated G protein. It then activates adenylate cyclase. 
adenylate cyclase's job is to take ATP, turns it into cyclic AMP, and then cyclic AMP has one of a few different jobs that it can perform in the cell, which we discussed before. And this picture is showing uh, cyclic AMP activating a protein kinase. Protein kinase would add a, pho a phosphate group to a protein, which would activate it. This picture on the bottom is showing this uh, activated G protein activating a separate enzyme system, the phospholipase C system. Uh, and we are going to, um, and we'll go over this one now. So phospholipase C uh, is another enzyme and its job is to take this PIP2 and cleave it. And as you cleave this PIP2, it will split into DAG, which is diacylglycerol, and IP3, and acetyl triphosphate. DAG can then activate a protein kinase, protein kinase C as you see here, which can then go and, again, kinase will phosphorylate, so you're going to phosphorylate a protein or activate it. The other part, so PAP2 turns into DAG and IP3. IP3's job is to cause the release of calcium from your endoplasmic reticulum. Calcium release can then, again, we see several different jobs that it can perform. Calcium can uh, adjust permeability of the membrane by adjusting this ion channel. You can open this ion channel right here. It can bind to calmodulin, which can then activate protein kinase enzymes. Again, protein kinases would phosphorylate a protein and then therefore activate it. And you see it can use calmodulin in order to get there, or calcium itself without the aid of calmodulin can activate those protein kinase enzymes. You may remember calmodulin uh, from the contraction of smooth muscle. This is the same um, the same protein. Now with these uh, receptor systems, you have different types of messengers. You have your first messenger, which is going to be the neurotransmitter itself. This is the messenger from your presynaptic neuron. You also have second messengers. In the adenylate cyclase system, your second messenger is cyclic AMP. It carries that message from your neurotransmitter inside the cell because the neurotransmitter doesn't cross the membrane. It just binds to the receptor on the outside of the membrane. So cyclic AMP is a second messenger here. And then in the phospholipase C system, we see DAG and IP3 and calcium um, function as uh, second messengers. And calcium is actually going to be a third messenger. Um, so DAG and IP3 are your second messengers, and calcium is your third messenger. And just in case you get confused uh, or have trouble with the pictures, here's a step-by-step -step, um, sequence of events. Adenylate cyclase pathway, you have your, again, this is a neurotransmitter, binds to your receptor. Receptor activates your G protein, which then activates adenylate cyclase. Adenylate cyclase's job is to convert cyclic, uh, sorry, ATP into cyclic AMP, and cyclic AMP can then activate protein kinases uh, or adjust membrane permeability. Phospholipase C, your neurotransmitter activates your receptor, which can then activate your G protein. Phospholipase C can then uh, cleave PIP2 into DAG and IP3, and these again are going to be your second messengers. DAG's job is to activate your protein kinase, so you can activate those proteins by adding a phosphate group. And IP3 is going to cause the release of calcium, which can then cause um, uh, activation of your protein kinases. And calcium here, in this pathway, is going to be your third messenger. And this again is another picture showing the adenylate cyclase pathway. Neurotransmitter binds to receptor. Receptor activates G protein. G protein activates adenylate cyclase. 
and adenylate cyclase's job is to turn ATP into cyclic AMP. Cyclic AMP can activate protein kinases. So now this is active. Protein kinase's job is to cause phosphorylation. It gets the phosphate group from ATP. So you can see this protein kinase is going to take a phosphate from ATP and add it to this protein. So down here you see ADP because you've removed a phosphate and you've put it on this protein. So now this protein has been activated by adding that phosphate group. Before I said that you have a big amplification of your signal. For each individual neurotransmitter that binds to its receptor, you are going to create many, many, many cyclic AMP. And each cyclic AMP is capable of activating many, many protein kinases. And all of these protein kinases will activate many, many proteins uh, by adding phosphate groups to it. And so you end up with millions of phosphorylated proteins um, that are all going to work in your cell for each individual neurotransmitter. Uh, so this is obviously a much longer, more drawn out process than an ionotropic receptor, but you get much more activity going on in your cell um, as a result. So it's very important that you have an off switch here, and that's where phosphodiesterase comes in. Phosphodiesterase is an enzyme which will inactivate cyclic AMP. So there's your off switch. When you have achieved your desired result in your cell, phosphodiesterase will inactivate cyclic AMP. So you don't just end up with this cascade of reactions getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Phosphodiesterase acts as your off switch.